feel such a liberty in the spirit of the Lord today. I believe that he is here. Uh, the Bible says where two or three are gathered together in his name. There he is in the midst of them. And so we serve a God that's here today. The book of Joshua, if you would stand for the honor of the reading of the word. I'm going to be reading verses 1 through 6. Book of Joshua, chapter 1, verse 1 says, Now after the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, it came to pass that the Lord spake unto Joshua, the son of Nun, Moses' minister, saying, Moses, my servant, is dead. Now therefore arise and go over this Jordan, thou, that means you, and all the people, and to the land which I do give to them, even to the children of of Israel. And I want you to look at verse 3 here. It says, And every place that the sole of your foot shall tread upon, that have I given unto you, as I said to Moses. Now I want to stop there. We're going to continue in verse 4. But uh, the founding fathers originate between Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And this same word was spoken unto Abraham that everywhere that the sole of your foot shall tread upon, that have I given unto you. I want somebody to hear the voice of the Lord today to say, there's a promise for you in this house today. And I have come to remind you that God has given you a promise. He has given you a land to take. He has given you the authority to step over into your promised land. Hallelujah. And verse 4 says, From the wilderness and this Lebanon, even to the great river, the river Euphrates, at all the land of the Hittites and into the great sea toward the going down of the sun shall be your coast. And verse 5 says, There shall not any man be able to stand before thee all of the days of thy life. There's not going to be anyone that can stand in front of you from what your promise is when God promises you something. Hallelujah. I will not fail thee nor forsake thee, he said. And in verse 6, be strong and of good courage, for unto this people shalt thou divide for an inheritance. A promise. An inheritance. The land which I swear unto their fathers to give them. All across this place, can we close our eyes and lift our hands and pray right now. Lord, God, in your name, Jesus, we come to you today. Lord, offering up our time, our sacrifice unto you to hear back your word. Lord, move in this place. Move out what is not of you. God, I ask you right now to anoint this service, anoint my lips of clay, and be in our midst today. Minister to the heart of those that are hungry in this house. In your precious name, and everyone said in Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated. Hallelujah. I want to preach a little bit older school. A little bit old style. I don't know if all of you are familiar with old time Pentecost, but uh, there was a great uh, movement back in the day where people just got up and as simple minded as they could, they preached there is a God. They preached that God is a way maker. They preached that God can make a way where there seems to be no way. And so I come to you today not with a great uh, orchestrated message of, of great wisdom. I just want to simply tell somebody in the house today that Jesus still loves you and Jesus still cares for you and Jesus is still going to make a way where there seems to be no way. I don't know what you've been up against in your life. I don't know if your back's been against the wall, but God is saying, Lo, I'm with you and today is a day where I'm going to reveal myself to you and in this title, in this message, in this lesson today, I want to bring to you this thought, the power in the know, the power in the know. And I want you to see there it's K-N-O-W, not N-O. Right. There's power in the know. So we see the story of the promise of God to Moses that was then given to Joshua. And it was that everywhere that the sole of your foot shall tread upon, that have I given unto you. As far as your eye can see, as far as your imagination can go, I want to bless you. I want to tell somebody today that God wants to bless you. I don't know if you're going through a stage of poverty in your life. I don't know if you're going through a stage of sickness in your life. But God's plan is not to curse you. God's plan is to bless you. God's plan is not 
to be against you, but God's plan is to be for you. You see, he made a promise a long time ago, and that promise still stands today. He said, I'm with you. I'm with Amen. I just want to tell you that today you're blessed. I mean, look around you at your family. Look around you at the things that you have uh, uh, accumulated over your life. Look at your houses and look at your cars and, and look at the food that you eat on a day-to-day -day basis. My friend, you are blessed just when you think you have it bad. I want to tell you today, you are blessed. You know why? Because Jesus said a long time ago, I'm giving you everything that you want if you'll just abide in me. And so you are a blessed people. You are a chosen priesthood, a royal people, a, a chosen generation. God has chosen you for a time such as this. But you've got to remember, sometimes we forget to know. We forget the knowledge of what God has done for us. We forget how he's brought us out of darkness and placed us into a marvelous light of blessing and not curse. All across this place, I know there's people that you might think you're struggling. But my, 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 if you would just do a research of who might really be struggling over in, in third world countries and what they have to deal with and the water that they drink is not clear, but it's dark and it's, it's muck and mire, it's muddy. And we are so blessed that we have water here today because we are a blessed people. God has blessed us. And he's wanting to remind you that there's power in knowing that. There's power in knowing that. I want you to think just for a moment, what has God done for you? Lately, what has God blessed you with lately? We are expecting a child. What a blessing that is to think that God can allow someone like me to be responsible for a child. Lord have mercy, but he blesses. He blesses his people. We have to abide in him. Think on him. Know who he is and know the power that he holds in his hand. You're not average, I'm telling you today. You're not mediocre. You are a cut above, and God loves you. God knows you, and he knows your name. He knows the number of hairs on your head. He knows when you go out, and he knows when you come in. He knows when you're struggling. He knows when you're lonely. He knows when you're counting out, and you're feeling significant. He knows right where you are when you think you're all alone. My friend, the devil is a liar, and he will come to you and say that you are all alone, and you have walking into this house today. God, where are you? And he is saying, I am right there by the very mention of my name. If you call upon my name, I am with you right there in that moment of time. Jesus is here in this house today telling somebody, don't forget, but you must know that I am with you always, even until the end of this world. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 He's in your corner. He hasn't left you. You may feel like you're in the fight and your coach is not there telling you what to do, where to go, and when to duck and when to swing, but he's right there. You just got to be familiar with his voice. You just got to give ear to hear what the Spirit is trying to say to you. Because sometimes we want to hear this audible voice and we forget all about that God operates in the spirit realm. We forget all about that he moves in the spirit realm. And so we, 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 we sit there and we're trying to hear this human flesh voice. And, and I don't hear a direction from God. I don't know where I'm at, where I'm going, where I'm headed. But if you would just stop for a moment and say, God, give me ear to hear what you're trying to tell me right now. And he is saying, I'm right here with you. Oh, you think you have it tough, but oh, just call upon my name. Demons tremble at the mention of the name of Jesus. And so just call upon the name of the Lord in this place right now. I wish a few people would just call upon Jesus in this place today. Hallelujah. I'm going to steal a line out of Tom Foster's book. We're up and not down. Yes. We're in and not out. Right. We're over and not under. Yes. The Bible says that we are made overcomers by the word of our testimony. You have a testimony. You have something to be excited about. God is alive and well and he is with you today. We're the children of God. You may have felt like you've been wandering around for a long time in a desolate place with no direction, but the days of confusion are over. God is about to reveal himself to you, and when he does, you will find power. Everyone said power. power. 
power in the no. The power in the no. When you know that you know, that you just know that you know. I just know, I know that I serve a living God that can bring me out of every situation. When you walk around with that authority, when you walk around with that faith that says, I don't care what's in front of me. I know that I have a God that walks with me and he holds my hand and he says, listen to me, Brandon, you may think there's not a way, but there is a way out that I can provide for you because I have all power and authority on earth and in heaven. I want somebody to leave this place today with that authority to know that there's nothing that the devil can do to harm me. There's nothing that he can do to take away my faith. For I serve a living God who's able. Oh, that light bulb's about to go off in somebody's head today. I told you, I won't go preach long. But God's saying, I'm able. If you would just grab a hold of my unchanging hand. I'm able to bring you out. I'm able to provide a way for you when there seems to be no way. thinking that it happened upon our own ability, upon our own authority, upon our own work ethics. Hallelujah. Faith without works is dead. It takes works, but it takes faith. It takes faith to make it. Hallelujah. Oh, Jesus, help me, Lord, to get through this. Hallelujah. When I look back over my life, that old song says, and I think things over. I can surely say that I have been blessed. I have a testimony. I have a testimony. Sister Jessica, I've been through tests that have made me realize that I have something better than a test. I have a testimony because God brought me out. I'm going to share with you a few stories to build your faith today. Mom, do you remember what the doctor said? Mom, do you remember before us three boys, our two older brothers were born? The doctor said there's no way that you can have children. There's no way that you can give birth. There's no way that you'll ever have babies. Uh, I don't know. Uh, can you see me today? Can you see me? We're standing right here. My God. My God. The, the doctors may say one thing, but when mom and dad know who Jesus is, when they know a higher power than a doctor, when they know a higher power than a physician, my God, you can operate in the authority of the anointing of the Holy Ghost and say, I know a God who is able. Lord, give me children, for that's my heart's desire. My friend, I stand here today preaching the gospel of the Holy Ghost because I am an offspring of a faith that says I know a God. Hallelujah. Jesus has all the power and all the authority that no matter what the doctors may say is wrong with your body, God is able. Hallelujah. 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 If you begin to know that, there's power in the know. When you begin to see that, there's power in the know. Somebody say, power in the know. Power in the know. Hallelujah. When I was just a baby, I was born, and uh, this might be funny to some of you, I'll laugh with you, I was kind of like Forrest Gump. I had special shoes, and Mama said they'd take me anywhere. <laughs> so did I. My, did you? <laughs> He's telling me. How about your sisters? <laughs> we'll talk later. But I had to wear special shoes, and my dad said, My God, how fast would they wear out? Because of the way that I would walk, I was pigeon toed real, real bad. My legs were turned in, and I would go through these real expensive shoes, and I'd have to walk in kind of these braces. and. I couldn't really get around just good and my hips 
would fall out of place. And my mom had to put two diapers on me as a baby. Uh, and I remember uh, her telling us the story, telling me the story of how in this deformity, so to speak, uh, but they just continued to know who Jesus is. They continued to lay me on an altar. They continued to have faith in God. Right. They continued to lay their hands upon that little baby boy and say, God, you are a way maker. You can make a way where there seems to be no way. You can pull something here. You can create a miracle in his life. And, and, and it wasn't soon after that I began to walk and, and, and they noticed that I began to straighten my legs. And, and over time, uh, I'm, I'm preaching to you, brother, because I know you have a child that's two years old that's going through the same thing. And I'm going to tell you right now, when you begin to know who Jesus is and you grab a hold of God's hand and you say a simple prayer over that baby, God can heal him. And now look at me today walking straight. I play every sport that I can play. I run as fast as I can run. I do as much as I can do. Why? Because there's power in the know. There's power in the know. There's power in the know. Somebody here today, there's power in the know. for the anointing right here, the oil. The Bible says that if you have faith the size of a mustard seed, yes. ha, ha, you can lay hands upon the sick and they shall recover. Yes. We, we serve a God who still heals. Yes. We serve a God who still can heal your body yes. if you would just know Him. Yes. Hallelujah. I'm going to tell one more story here. Brother Hudson, Pastor Hudson, you can relate to this. Correct me if I'm wrong, but are you the 18th pastor that's come through here in the city of Denton? 17 pastors prior to Brother Hudson tried to start a one God apostolic movement and church here in the Denton area. After people said no, the city of Denton said no, we don't need another church in the city of Denton. So many voices said, no, it cannot be done. We will not pass you. You cannot do it. We will not have another church here in the city of Denton. I want to take a notification that the voice of the people said something like this. In, oh, it cannot be done. They said, no, Brother Hudson, we love you, sir, but it just cannot happen. But he didn't listen to in, oh, he listened to the K, N, O, W, and he said, no, you weren't there when God promised me, didn't you? You weren't there when God promised me a church, and I want you to look all around you, for we are standing here in a progressive movement, because somebody knew the voice of God and knew the power that he holds in his hand. He can change everybody's opinion from no to yes in a matter of a moment. Do you know Jesus? <laughs> We wanted to build this building. I had the plans under my arm. I walked into the city office. And uh, I said, uh, here are the plans to our new church. The lady said, you'll have to take that down to a gentleman by the name of Mr. Stiglman. Took the plans down to Jim. Walked in his office. I said, Jim, we want to build a church out here on Sermon Drive. These are the plans. He said, no, sir. He said, you can just put those plans right back under your arm. Walk right back out that door. He said, because we're not building any more new churches in Denton. He said, we've launched a moratorium against building one more church building in this city. There will be no more new churches in this city. Oh, my heart sank because we had invested our money and we had five acres of property on this site. For a minute, I was just like a prize fighter. I was hit right on the end of the nose and all I saw was stars. I said, Mr. Jim, I said, I'm going to go now. I said, but you, you must not know the God I serve. <laughs> I just walked out to my car and I cried just like a little girl. Laid those plans in the seat of my car. I said, Lord, I didn't come to quit. Yes, my God. Yes, Lord. I came to build a work for your kingdom. Yes. All I want to ask you to do is just help me. If you'll help me. Came to the church and I told the church what I'm telling you. The Lord said put the church on seven days of fasting and prayer. 
I want you to know right now it has to be something this serious before this crew around here is going to pass for seven days. That's the last time that happened. That's been 15 years ago. Aren't you glad no one said no lately? I said, we're going to pray. We're going to fast. Everybody sign this list of when you'll pray. We want to pray 24 hours a day for seven days. We want to fast. We fasted. We prayed, Brother Larry. Monday on the eighth day, walked right back into Jim's office with those plans underneath my arm. I spoke to Miss Kathy, the secretary. I said, Kathy, I'm Reverend Hudson. She said, I know who you are. I said, I'm here to see Jim. She said, uh, <clears throat> I don't know what's going on here with Jim. She said, all I know is that this morning I got here at 10 minutes to 8. I'm supposed to be here at 8 o'clock. And she said, at 8 o'clock straight up, Jim walked in. Walked straight over to his office and got a cardboard box. Cleared out his desk. Took his pictures off the wall. Walked right by me and threw his keys to his office on my desk and walked out that door. She said, I have no idea what happened to Jim. I said, oh, well, I do. I do. She said, is that your church plans? I said, yes, ma'am, they are. She said, just give them to me. Five days later, we were approved by the city of Denton to build this building. So let me tell you something. I agree with what the young man preaches right here, right now. When you know that he is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all you can ask or think. I'm glad that somebody here is in the know. the voice of men is no. I want you to know the promises of God are yea and they are amen. The promises of God are yea and we're going back to scripture where he promised them the land. God has made people promises in this place today and I want you to know about them. I want you to remember to those that have lived this life, that have lived for God and you have had heard the voice of God at some point promise you something you cannot forget. But you must know because there's power in the know. Hallelujah. All things change when you know God. Mountains move when you know God. Waters part when you know Him. Death comes to life when you know Jesus. Things are in store when you know who Jesus is. There's power in knowing Jesus. There's victory in knowing Jesus. There's deliverance in knowing Jesus. Yes, amen. To know him is to understand. And here's what I want to talk about next. Who he is. Who he is. There's a revelation in who Jesus is. He's all things to all people. He is a healer. He is a deliverer. He is a lover. He can wrap his arms around you when you feel so lonely. I've been in that moment where I just needed God. I needed affirmation from him to comfort me when I felt so all alone. And I just call upon his name, Jesus. In the midnight hour, the Bible says he's as close as the mention of his name, Jesus. There's authority in that name. There is so much power beyond your imagination when you call upon the name that is above every name. The name that when it's mentioned, demons tremble. The name that when it's mentioned, the Bible says that every knee will bow and every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is King of kings and Lord of lords. Hallelujah. So we talk about the revelation and knowing him and the power that he gives. In the book of Acts chapter 1 and verse 8 it says, And ye shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost is come upon you. Now I'm up here preaching about a God that loves you. 
and a Jesus that, that is for you. And, and, and But I'm going to tell you something. It takes this plan of salvation found in the book of Acts chapter 2 and verse 38, which we read this past Wednesday night. It was Peter preaching simply this. He said, repent and be baptized, which is what we're going to do here in just a moment. Every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Let me break it down to you. When you do that, you shall receive the gift, the power of the Holy Ghost, the power to walk right, the power to talk right, the power to live right, the power to be right, and the power to persevere. It gives you power to do what your flesh could not do. It gives you power to go where you could not go before. When you have the anointing and the Holy Ghost of Jesus given to us in this New Testament, there's power in the no. Yes. With knowledge, you receive power. When you know that you know that you know, there's such an authority when you don't have any doubt in you. When you live a life that says, you know what? There's nothing that anyone can tell me. There's nothing that anyone can do to shake my faith. I've seen too much. I know too much. God's done too much for me for me to turn back and walk away or sit on my hands anymore. I'm going to serve Him with everything that is within me. When you know. Hallelujah. John chapter 14 and verse 6 says that Jesus is the way. He is the truth. He is the life. And there is none like him. There's none beside him. Have you found someone that can do what he can do? No. No. Have you found someone near his equal? No. no. Have you found someone that can make a way of escape when you seem to be in the midst of a desert? No. no. I have searched the world over. I have lived 33 years on this earth and there is no one like him to me. Yes. Hallelujah. Like you, Rachel, get ready. I'm going to tell a story again and I'm going to close with this. I can remember as a child, about 8, 9, 10 years old, 11 years old, my dad worked for the city of Dallas and their office was there in the city of Dallas and uh, mom would take us up to visit him from time to time during the summer, usually when we didn't have school. And uh, I could see the building now. And I would walk from the car and I'd walk up to the city building. I knew dad was on the inside. Come on now. So I stepped in that building with all authority because I knew who he was. Yeah. I knew I wouldn't get in trouble. I knew that they wouldn't stop me because, see, they, they knew who I was. They, I was James David's son, little Brandon. But I walked in that place like I owned the joint. I walked and I touched everything in sight. I loved to look at the signs and the lights and, and all of the things that were in that building. And I just walked around like it was mine simply because I knew who was in it. That's right. <laughs> I wish somebody would get yeah. But the voice of God is trying to say you when he says every place that the sole of your foot shall tread upon, that have I given unto you. You don't have to walk around anymore scared that you're going to get in trouble when you walk around with the authority of the word of God that says no matter where you go, no matter what you do, my hand is with you. I am with you. I've got my stamp of approval on you and I have made a promise to you that no man can take away, that no man can stand in front of. Why? Because you know that you know that you know that you know. I knew who was on the inside. When you get the revelation of who is on the inside of you. When you get that revelation that there's a God that is living alive and well on the inside of you. You can step where you haven't stepped before. You can ask for things that you never dreamed of asking before. God, give me this. Bless me here. Touch that. Bless my children. Save my family. God, I need you. God, I want to know you. I want to know you today, God. I want to know the God that made the way where there seemed to be no way for the children of Israel. I want to know the God that made that promise to my forefathers, God, so that I can walk in that same authority, in that same blessing, in that same anointing, in that same covering that God is offering to you today. He wants to pull back the veil and show you your promise. He's already done so many things in the last couple of months for so many people in this place. Joe's going to kill me, but he's blessed you and Brittany, Joe. Yeah. 
God made a way where there seemed to be no way. When the voice of man said no, God said yes. I see you and I know where you are and I'm making a way right now. Even though you don't see it, I make provisions. Would you feel blinded when everyone else is saying it can't be done? It's not possible. God still reaches you. He still knows you. I wish we could all stand in this front right now. Come, come forth. Come forth and begin to know who he is. He wants to reveal himself to you to be all powerful, to be all anointed. The anointed hand of God is in this place today. Come on, the elders of our church and our ministry team are going to meet you down front. For the saints of here that know, that know, that you know, that you know. Come on.